Good morning, gossip friends. As a surprise to absolutely no one, Shirley Merritt's no good son got convicted yesterday. I am very happy. Here's the thing that's really interesting though, because honestly, if you watched this case at all, I mean, even for two seconds, there was never a moment where you were like, hmm, maybe he didn't do that. I thought, can the state prove it? Although they do have all that nice juicy evidence that they laid out. And the defense was like, uh, maybe he didn't. And honestly, I appreciate the defense for at least standing up there and pretending like they believe this man's bull hockey because honestly, even he didn't believe his story. He at least had the common decency to act surprised when he got convicted, which I for one appreciate. They were like, he was sitting up there like, okay, um, Sir, you're a lawyer. You should know that when the jury comes back in 59 minutes, oh yes, it didn't even take them an hour to find his behind guilty. He was sitting there like, okay, well maybe, maybe I'm only gonna do this 12 years for the financial crime and maybe another five or six for the escape that I did. So he was sitting there like, okay. And they were like, yeah, dude, nah, 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 you're guilty. It took a little bit more words than that. That's basically what he said. what they said. This is his reaction. Sir, you just slumped over like a puppet whose strings got cut. You need to have all the seats in the world because in addition to being a terrible writer with that ridiculous, ridiculous story you came up with about the two bad guys with the gun, everybody knew you were lying. Here's the thing that's so funny. According to Shirley Merritt's No Good Son, a tall, skinny guy and a short, pudgy guy came in with guns and uh, didn't use the guns to shoot his mother. They used her personal kitchen knife and his uh, dumbbells to conk her on the head. Um, and then he went on with some a bunch more ridiculousness. So they came there to kill you, but they killed your mother instead. Okay, uh, and you didn't report it to the police because you didn't think you would be safe in police custody. Sure, sir. The old people that you cheated and the cops all got together to hire this hitman, and so you had to go run away for eight, nine months? Mm-mm, sir. You had four years in prison, three years in prison to think of a better story than this and to practice it in the mirror. Yes, you your mirror was just like a shiny piece of metal or something, but... Dude, maybe you should have used a buddy to practice this story. Practice with a friend. You did a terrible job. You're a terrible, terrible person. And you know how I know you're a terrible person? Oh, not only did you kill Shirley, who makes that good, good coconut cake and the nice steamy garlic bread. I promise I'm going to stop talking about garlic bread now that this case is over. But Shirley, rest in peace. Please send our favorite psychic, Serafina Donna, Donna Serafina, to give me the recipe for your coconut cake, your garlic bread, and the carrot cake. I'm not going to mention it again unless I really need to. But anyway, not only did you take that, those delicious recipes out of this world, you didn't even seem sorry about it. Not even a little bit. When he talked about his mother um, being bonked on the head, he giggled a little bit, sir. You, you, you're not supposed to do that. I mean... You can, obviously. It just says to us, oh, uh, the man who shall not be mentioned because his name is not worthy of being in my mouth. He's trash. He's just trash. And I understand it. He understands it. And then when he got up to give his like excuse or whatever, he said, um, your honor, you know, I fell victim to the oldest addiction in the world, that green stuff, sir. Talk about how sorry you are that your mother is gone. Listen, I don't think he should have got up there and claimed innocent because we all knew he was not innocent. But he was like, yeah, it's a tale as old as time. I got obsessed with the money and I did terrible things. Thank you. Now I'll take my sentence. Sir, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. And... Ooh, the best part, the victim impact statement. There was nobody there for Shirley's no good son. Maybe Shirley was there in spirit, but probably in spirit, she was like, this lying sack of, mm. So uh, some cousin got up, Mr. Jeffcoat. He got up and he was like, your honor, thank you so much for doing a lovely trial. Defense attorney, we see you try because we all know this dude is trash. I just want you to know, Shirley was a wonderful woman and everybody in the family, everybody thinks that her no good son is complete trash. We want nothing to do with him. He's a terrible human being. Sentence him to everything you got. Please and thank you. 
and then he sat down. Those were not his exact words. I'm summarizing as I am wont to do. Also, the cousin who stood up, this is the thing, right? Lord, I'm off on a minute, million tangents today, but this is always interesting to me. So when a man stands up, the, the cousin, Mr. Jeff Coates, stood up and gave his statement, and his wife was standing next to him or his girlfriend or whatever. As a minority woman, I know it's a shock to you. I'm a black lady. But anyway, so as a black lady, I notice other black ladies. So this is a white family. This was some white on white crime. I ain't have nothing to do with us. Leave the minorities out of it. So this dude stood up, the cousin, this white guy. And he, this black lady was standing next to him. And I was like, who's the black lady? Oh, you got a black wife? Suddenly that just makes me makes you a more interesting person in my eyes. I'm like, oh, you got some black friends. Does, does your wife have a good potato salad recipe? Because I might need that. Anyway. Um, it just was, she didn't say anything because she's like, you know, I can't get up here in public and talk bad about these white people. Cause I don't, I don't know how that's going to go. Although we are living in a new day. And so maybe it won't be that bad for her, but whatever. She was covering her bases and I'm not mad at her about that. But everybody in this community hated this man, including his ex-wife, his children, his brother. The district attorney got up there and was like, um, your honor, his brother also thinks he's trash and that you should throw the book at him. We never want to see this line sack of sugar again, but, um, he's, too like upset to talk understandable so this boy's this the gentleman who lost his mother not Shirley's no good son Shirley's good and decent son who's nine years older has now lost a brother which I suspect was no big loss and a mom and that big beautiful mansion that she lived in all of it is terrible so they l whopped him plus five years. That's life without parole plus five years. So if he dies and comes back, he's still got to do five years. Reincarnated Shirley's no good son still has to do five years. And that seems fair. I hope nobody visits him. I hope that some big man in prison who misses his mama is not that nice to him. That's all I'm going to say about that. So, sir, please enjoy your bologna casserole and your beef sticks and whatever else they have in prison. I hope it's not one of those prisons with the good, good food because you do not deserve it because you did away with Shirley and that is your punishment. For all eternity, you have to eat bad food and live in prison and live with yourself. Although, I think you're probably quite comfortable living with yourself because you, my sir, are a sociopath in other news. There's new Lori Vallow news, which I had not expected today. Miss Vallow, um, murderous that she is, is going to be sentenced on July 31st. Are we marking our calendars or was it June 31st? It's at the end of an upcoming month. This is the end of what month are we in now? We're in May. She's going to be sentenced at, I think it's the end of July. I'm almost sure it's July 31st. So, um, is there a 31st in July? Whatever. I will absolutely be covering that. And Alex Murdoch, it seems, was charged with 22 new crimes. They're still finding crimes on this man. Isn't he going down for life without the possibility of parole? Now, these crimes, these new crimes or financial crimes. And frankly, I think that's what Alex wants. I think Alex is hoping to scuttle himself off to a federal prison. But you know what I hope the federal government does say? Yeah, stay, you go on and take care of those. We don't want no parts of him. He's not going to go to one of our cushy day camp prisons where you can learn to macrame and braid people's hair and play pickleball or whatever they do in federal prison. I don't know. I don't want to know. I'm not going. We all know the Jin Shaw and Elizabeth Holmes are tucked away in some federal prison in, uh, I think it's Texas, where they're just learning to do crafts. Jin Shaw is directing a play. How are they doing plays in prison? Okay. She's directing the real housewives of whatever prison she's in. Your mom and them can't come and see you. Who's going to see this play? Y'all just doing it for your own edification? If that keeps you out of trouble and not hatch your new Ponzi schemes, then I'm all for it. Otherwise, girl, you need to go sit down, learn some yoga, take some anger management. How about that? There is a new case that I did not know anything about. I had not expected to cover. Yesterday, I was watching the live stream with um, Churchwell Charts. Brandy Churchwell, 
I love Brandy Churchwell. I discovered Brandy Churchwell during the Murdoch trial when she did a chart to break down the timeline that didn't make sense. And she broke it all the way down. She also did a really good Lori Vallow timeline. I don't even know where it's at. I saw it once, haven't seen it since. Brandy, girl, if you're watching this, where's the Lori Vallow trial? Yes, the, the, the Lori Vallow chart. We know Vallow was finished at this point, but we still need that chart because from what I recall, it had pictures and stuff. Oh, I love pictures. Anyway, um, so I'm streaming with Brandy, like I'm, I'm participating in the stream. I'm not like on the screen. I was at work, get work done as I am want to do. And, um, I'm listening to Brandy. And so when they took the hour to convict, um, Shirley's no good son, she jumped over to this sports ball trial. Now, listen, I am not a sports fan. Nobody in my house is a sports fan. I actually have a child who is a sporting savant. He's excellent at every single sport he tries. And good for him. He's athletics. The girl, the girls like it. It all works out wonderful for him. Only thing is, he doesn't like sports teams. He's like, it's too much drills and running around. I just want to play the game. So all the time, I have coaches knocking on the door. Hello, ma'am. Um, can your youngest son come and be on my team? And I'm like, if he he wants to, we will support him being on the team. They're like, we'll pay the fees. We'll do the this. We'll do the that. And generally speaking, he goes to one practice, comes home and goes, nah, which is fine because A, I do not enjoy sports ball. B, I don't want to sit on a sports ball field. C, mosquitoes. If you play a sport where mosquitoes are involved or sweat, as in I might get sweaty standing in the bleachers or whatever. No, thank you. Now, if my child wants to play a sport, oh, I will get a t-shirt that says sports ball mom. I will figure out the rules. I will figure out how the whole thing works and I will go and support my baby because that is my child. But the fact that he's not at all interested in being on the team, well, that just frees up my time to do more gardening and videos and baking and other stuff and driving him to the 500 million other places he wants to go. So it works out just fine for me. Anyway, some sports ball dude, football, what's NFL? I, sport, foot, football, football? Okay, whatever. Some ex-NFL player that I never heard of, but I never would have heard of him anyway, gets, uh, he shot and killed somebody. That's the bottom line. And so I was like, hmm, I'm listening to the opening arguments, not because I wanted to, but because Brandy Churchwell's uh, live feed went to it. So I was like, okay, this is what we're doing. Okay. This is what we're doing. So I was listening and I was fascinated by this case, Travis Rudolph, the state of Florida versus Travis Rudolph. So this trial, listen, I'm not a juror, so I am allowed to prejudge and I'm listening to the, op uh, oh, just gotta adjust myself. My booty is sweaty. Um, y'all need to know all that, but that's what was going on. So in this trial, um, this dude, Mr. Rudolph, shot and killed this young kid. And I was like, why would an NFL player shoot and kill somebody? And then the prosecution got up and described the case. And I was like, oh, this is stand your ground. This young kid was totally, totally in the wrong. But I'm going to listen. I have prejudged the whole situation. I've decided what it all is. And Everybody in this case is an idiot and entirely unlikable. But if this is where Brandy's going to be, then this is where I'm going to be. We going to watch this trial. And so I'm watching the trial and I was like, oh, this trial is much more nuanced than we thought. And it's going to need an entire separate video all on its own. So I'm going to have to figure out the names of the people or I will just make some up. You know how I do because my memory's bad. I drink too much coffee. We got things going on over here. So I'm going to cover um, Travis, no, the state of Florida versus Travis Rudolph. Um, and I will give you all the good tea on that. But first, let me um, refresh my coffee. Did I tell y'all I was thinking about doing coffee cups? I think I want a gossip rumor and innuendo coffee cup. I just think it's necessary. So I was designing one online yesterday. Um, the sample will be here in the mail to me very soon. And I will decide what I think about it. How do you feel about merch? Listen, let us be very clear. On the merch, I, I don't know how other people do it, but it's not like a... a you're not hauling in cash on merch. I mean, I guess you could in theory, but I personally, that is not my plan. I have a regular job that gives me benefits and cash and whatever. And I really just, I enjoy my job. I don't have to work that hard. So these YouTube streamers who go out there and do this for a living, I 
think that's great. Good for you. It's not for me. I want to get on here when I want to get on here. I want to talk about what I want to talk about. I don't want to have to have a bunch of equipment or whatever. I just want to sit here and rub my big old mouth because that is what I'm good at. Sometimes I sit in people's living room and rub my mouth, sit in my living room and rub my mouth, sit here in my office and rub my mouth. Oh, child, my mouth is portable. I can run it anywhere. And I do frequently. So um, streaming, that's not my ministry, but I like when other people do it. And streamers have merch, not random ladies from New Jersey. Random ladies from New Jersey, we do not have merch. But because I drink coffee every morning, ooh, I love a coffee. Um, I kind of want a GRI coffee mug, so I designed one. So let me know what you think about coffee mugs. Um, that will likely be my only little tidbit of merch because I don't have the bandwidth to add one more thing to my plate. I told you that child wants me to drive him everywhere. Okay, let me refresh my coffee and then we can talk about Mr. Travis Rudolph and his family and his girlfriend and that shooting over there. Y'all have a great day and I will see you soon on the Travis Murdoch, no, Travis Murdoch, sweet Jesus, on the Travis Rudolph video. Bye.